running totals are the cumulative sum of a sequence of number at any given point. There are three ways to calculate running totals. The first one is by using the basic sum formula. The second one is by using the basic sum formula with arrays. And then thirdly, using the array formula of matrix multiplication. Let's demonstrate all three ways to calculate running totals one by one. To calculate running total using basic sum formula, simply type equals, followed by the column name, B2. This will give us the exact value 11, as in cell B2 since there is no other number in the sequence as of now. To get the running total for the second row, we will simply add the current cell B3 with the previous total, C2 like this. Here you can notice that we are adding values to the previous total to obtain our running total. 11 plus 34 equals 45. And then, we can simply drag it down to the rest of the cells in running total column and it will give us the running total for all the entries. Now, let's take a look on our second method to calculate running total, which is submission method with arrays on a range of cells. Let's write the formula quickly and then we'll explain it in details. The formula here is equals to followed by sum opening round bracket with a dollar sign on first cell reference B2 colon second cell reference which is also B2 followed by closing round bracket. Here you can see we have used the dollar sign with first cell reference only. Let's have a look on these cell references in details and then we'll come back to our formula. An absolute cell reference is the one whose value will not change. As a syntax, a dollar sign is used with absolute reference cell. If we drag down the value of cell B2 which is 10, will remain the same. So, the absolute cell reference does not changes when copied to a corresponding cell. However, a relative cell reference always changes. For instance, we enter the reference of cell A2 in cell C2. Now, if we drag it down, it will change with the corresponding values of column A. Here, you can see that cell C3 has the value of cell A3. And, cell C4 has the value of cell A4. So, basically in this method we are using a combination of an absolute and relative cell references to achieve running total. The colon sign indicates that these are the starting and ending point of this sum formula. For cell C2, the absolute and the relative cell reference both are B2. But, if we copy this formula down to one cell, you will notice that now the relative cell reference has changed to B3. Similarly, if we copy the formula all the way down to sixth row, you can see that the relative cell reference will update on each cell while the absolute cell reference will remain constant. Before moving to the third method, we will have a look at the dynamic method of calculating running totals. For instance, we want to calculate the expense for a whole month, and we want to apply the formula to all 30 days cells beforehand. If we copy the formula as it is, you can see, that it will copy the value of last total, 103, to rest of the cells. But, we want this total to be updated, only when a value is added in expense column. To achieve this, we will add the running total formula with an if statement. If condition, will basically check, if the corresponding cell in column B is, empty, then, it, will not calculate the running total. And, if there, is a value in the corresponding cell of column B, it will calculate the running total based on what formula you have provided. Whenever a new value is added, the running total gets updated dynamically. Similarly, we can achieve dynamic running total by submission method with arrays by adding the same if statement. We will simply add the formula within if statement and drag it down to rest of the cells. And you can see that for the blank cells in column B, the running total is also blank. It will only get updated when we make an entry in column B.
The third method is array formula of matrix multiplication. In this method, running total is achieved by multiplication of two matrices. First, we have to see how we achieve the two matrices to be multiplied. We will do so by using the data we have in column B. So, to obtain the first matrix, we will follow six simple steps. The first step is to copy the row numbers from B2 to B6 using the array row formula. In second step, we will take transpose of the column vector we just achieved using the array row formula. To do so, we will use the array transpose formula. This will give us a row vector. Now, in step 3, we will compare the values in column vector against the row vector in a way that the formula returns true if the value is equal or lesser and false if it's greater. To do so, we will use the formula which will compare the two vectors. Now you can see when the formula is applied, it has returned the Boolean values as true and false respectively. For the next step, we will copy this whole matrix and paste it down, like this. These true and false are basically, zeros and ones. Now, we will multiply this matrix, to the dataset we have in, column B, from B2 to B6. To multiply, we will simply add, steric followed by, starting and ending cell number to the array formula. In step 5, we will take the transpose of this matrix. We are using the transpose function here. Now, this matrix is our matrix 1. And this matrix has an order of 5 cross 5. In order to achieve the second matrix, we will use the array sign formula. We are using the sign formula, on column B it will return 0, if the value in corresponding cell of column B is null, and return 1 otherwise. Since, we have values in all the cells so it returned all 1s. So, now, we have the two matrices to multiply. One has the order of 5 cross 5 and the other has an order of 5 cross 1. Here, we can relate to the matrix multiplication rule which states that the number of columns in matrix 1 should be equal to the number of rows in matrix 2 in order to multiply the two matrices. Finally, to multiply the two matrices, we will use the mmult formula. We will pass the two matrices as arguments in the formula. The two arguments here are transpose formula for first matrix and the sign formula, which we used to obtain our second matrix. We can achieve running total by this method dynamically as well, like we did with the first two methods. To do so, we just have to remove the last cell reference, B6, from our formula and replace it with the column name itself, which is B in our case. But, using this on the whole column will give us the last running total even for blank cells too. It will still update though, when we add a new value in expense column. For example, 
if we add 23, it will update the running total from 103 to 126. We'll copy 126 to the rest of the cells in column C for blank cells as well. To cater this, we can use an if error wrapper in our formula. What this does is, it checks, if the cell is blank, then, no running total will be calculated. But, as soon as you add a new value in expense column, the running total will be updated correspondingly.